gonna try my hand at a little cooking. We're here in the kitchen. What you see here is uh, some flowers. So I got home from work and I was changing out of my uniform and then I heard a knock on the door and I was like, like I was literally half dressed. So I was like, who's knocking? Cause no one ever knocks and it was almost three o'clock in the afternoon and I'm not usually home this early, but I was just weirded out. I thought maybe it was a salesman or something. So I got dressed and I ran to the door and he had been knocking quite aggressively for a while because I was just like, I really don't answer phone calls if I don't know who it is and I don't answer the door if I don't know who it is. So I went to the door and there was a man standing there with flowers for my husband. My husband is not home right now. He's away. They're on a mission, you know, doing their thing in the Navy. And he thought of me enough to get me some flowers. So that really surprised me and I love you. He doesn't watch these at all, so he's never gonna see this, but I just wanted to, I'm gonna relocate these one moment. Those of you that have watched Vine uh, know the gist of what I make. There's like some staple meals that I make for my husband. They're easy, clean, nutritious, and simple. I'm having a cup of coffee. Let me show you what I'm drinking. Because I know you all are curious. This is gonna, this makes me think of you, Madrigal. Look what I found. Pumpkin spice, naturally flavored coffee with other natural flavors. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is heat up some milk, pour the stuff in the milk, and drink the milk, i.e. The, the coffee, whatever. I don't have milk. My husband's the only one that drinks milk and he's not here, so I don't have milk. So what I did was, because I do drink coffee. I drink coffee now. It's weird. Join the Navy. Learn to drink coffee. So, like you're standing watch, there's nowhere to go, you can't get anything else, and the only thing you have is a mucky old cup of joe from the coffee pot that desperately needs cleaned, and you just, there's some free creamer and packets of sugar, and you're just like, well, it's gonna happen. And it happened. So what I did was, eight ounces of milk, so I only put six ounces of water, and then two ounces of this. And I'm not a fan of coffee, like I need to make it pretty sweet. So I think that's why this tastes so good. I think that if I were to add just this to milk, it would still be too bitter and not sweet enough. But I think because I did six ounces of water and then two ounces of this, this is milky enough to where when I poured it in the water, it looked like milk and it's sweet enough that it compensated for the sweetness that is not in milk. And then I heated that bitch and I poured it in a cup. There's little packets inside here. Like you can tell I drank coffee because I'm just talking a mile a minute. Packets. Anyways. Staple, staple. Gotta find a better place for my potatoes, but uh, it's a small kitchen. Small apartment. Small. That's kind of tasty. That's kind of really tasty. I like that. What I have here is a bag of Small red potatoes I purchased from the Vaughn. Little did I know Vaughn is a part of Safeway and if you have a Safeway card, it is a Vaughn card, basically. They vary in size. Look at that. Little ones, bigger ones. This is what's going to happen. I take some out of the bag. It doesn't matter how many because we don't measure. I almost hit myself in the face. We don't measure around this house. I wish I had measurements for you. I wish I had a recipe, but I don't. Then I take a little pan. You can use... When we first moved into this apartment, I did not have cookware. So what I did was, took some foil, and I laid a large piece out, and I folded the ends of foil in to make it so just so that like the juices wouldn't spill out or whatever, and I just cooked it on foil. But now I have my cookware, and I have these baking pans, and I tell my husband, I'm probably super cheesy for this, but he laughs. 
and he thinks it's cheesy too, which is the thing I do. I tell him that I cook it in a heart because my potato is filled with love. So I use my heart pan to cook his potatoes because I want him to know how much love there is inside his potatoes. Now we need a knife. Who a knife? <sighs> Wash your potatoes. We have the potatoes and I cut them the long way. I do not cut them the fat way. We want them narrow, right? So, you just cut all the potatoes in half. It doesn't even matter that they're different sizes because it cooks. I don't know. I've never noticed the difference between the big ones and the small ones. Like, even a small one like this. Can you dig it? Do you know why? Do you know why I think? Because though this one's small and this one's large, they're still about the same fatness. So, I don't think it even matters. I do not peel them. The peeling is nutritious and delicious. So, you guys are hanging out halfway in the air. I'm sorry if I'm shaky, but it's plugged into the wall because the camera is dying because they don't have it charged. So I have here my spice cabinet, a Lazy Susan that my sister bought me, and it's a very nice high quality Lazy Susan and my spices spin. I have the spices on here that I use most often because it's right next to the stove, and then I have a spice rack over there for other things, and I'm going to grab a couple spices and go back over here. So hold on. Boop, 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 boop. Hi. Hi, my friends. I need to preheat the oven to 400 and anywhere between 425 and 450. I just kind of swing the knob in that general direction. Could you see me do that? Swing in the knob in the general direction. Then I'm going to pick up some oregano. I'm going to pick up some salt. I'm going to pick up, uh, pick up uh, some parsley. Uh, some pepper. And, uh, probably grab some of this garlic powder. So, I use different spices each time because, um, I, I don't, I just do whatever I want. And when you start doing things in the kitchen and you make recipes, you'll, you'll be able to learn what kind of seasonings go on what. So if you're like a new, a new beginner person, like I was at that point too that I was afraid to... Um, play around with seasonings because I just didn't know what complemented what and what went on what kind of vegetable when or where or how much of you know what I mean so hopefully you're a little comfortable with spices because I don't measure but you really don't need to measure and I'll show you why so I have basic pepper black pepper salt I'm running out of garlic powder because garlic always it's great on potatoes. Garlic powder. You have garlic salt, but because I'm putting my own salt, I don't want garlic salt because that would just be really salty, right? So keep that in mind. Some people only have garlic salt. It's garlic powder. You know what I mean? Like, I know you guys know that, but... Then I have some oregano, and then I have some parsley. So, one of the greatest combinations um, that I made when I did these potatoes was when I did the ones on vine that looked like it had fresh green leaves on it, the ones that were in the vine video with the chicken cordon bleu, and that's because they were fresh herbs. Sage is so good on these. I had fresh sage, fresh parsley, and fresh rosemary, and then salt, pepper, garlic powder. So any of um, those kind of like thyme, you can put thyme if you like thyme, or what kind of... You can even just do the mix, the Italian seasoning mix that usually has all of those things in there. But what I'm going to do is salt these puppies. All you need is a shimmy. Let me fix this camera so I can see what I'm doing. All you need is a shimmy of salt uh, like this so that it coats them. Just like that. Just a quick shimmy, okay? Like, pre pretend you were going to take a bite of this and add as much salt as you would think you'd want to bite into. You know, like, don't, like, don't... You guys aren't idiots. I, I you know, I know that. Then we're going to do the same with pepper. I don't like a lot of pepper. I'm just going to go light enough to where I can see a few black sprinkles on the potato right there. Potato, potato. Can I zoom in and show you how much pepper maybe I put? There's this. There's the. Uh, there's the amount of pepper and salt. You can see it. A thin coat of salt and pepper. And we have garlic powder. If you're like my sister, hi Ashley. You probably like a lot of garlic powder. She loves garlic powder seasoning. Woo! 
But if you're like me, I just like a real light sprinkle. Is it even coming out? So it hardly even comes out. Oh, there it goes. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Then I'll take my oregano, okay? Remember we preheated the oven to uh, 450 or four, anywhere between 425 and 450. Depends on your oven. Sometimes, you know, your oven isn't uh... And then parsley. I don't think, like oregano is kind of strong, be easy, but parsley is not real super strong. So I kind of go ham because we're going to toss these a little and some of these sprinkles might fall off. But I like to kind of go ham on the parsley. Fresh parsley, fresh sage is optimal, but... And if you're anyone like my girl Crystal, Crystal from... Crystal from the hood, what up Crystal? She watched a six second clip of these potatoes on Vine and figured it out. Like you don't need an entire video for this if you're uh, proficient. Not even proficient, if you're intermediate. But if you're a brand spanking new beginner, this video's for you folks. Or even if just having... For some reason, you want to watch me cook potatoes. Here it is. It's a potato. It's a potato kind of day. It's really good. I think that I'm officially one of those white girls that is obsessed with pumpkin spice lattes. I saw this hashtag the other day, PSL, and it took me so long to figure out what in the hell PSL was. Pumpkin spice latte. It is so popular that it has its own hashtag and an acronym that I didn't know. What it was. So, who knew, right? Not me. So, but the way that I made it, I think, is best because I don't think it would be very sweet if it was just in milk. I'm going back to the spice cabinet. And while I'm in my cupboard, I clean up as I go. I don't like laying stuff all over the kitchen. We're waiting for the oven to preheat anyway. I have here some extra virgin olive oil. I've had every kind of version of extra virgin olive oil. There is big, tall, skinny ones, but I got that one easier. Mm -hmm. Boop. Boop. This sucker is this olive garden olive oil and this olive oil. They all taste the freaking same. Just get the cheapest one. It's olive oil for crying out loud. You can argue that point because there's certain aspects of olive oil. No, not aspects. There are certain times where Olive oil becomes uh. I'm stopping. I'm stopping there. So now, this is what I did when I first made these. Where's my heart pan? Okay. When I first made these, I was like, hmm, I'm just gonna save some dishes, save some dishes, save some time. Come on, tripod. You love me. Cricket? How's that? Come on, tripod. Be my friend. Is this gonna happen? This is, is this gonna happen? Down a little on the left. Straighten that bitch out like this. Pray. I love you, Walmart. I love, I love that you're inexpensive and such, but you really just have shitty products. This tripod should not be acting this way at this moment in time. Fuck it. So, what was I saying? Oh, I had an idea. I'm just going to put the halves of potatoes inside of my dish that I'm going to cook in and sprinkle all that and do just as I did on the cooking board. Sprinkle the salt, sprinkle the pepper, sprinkle the garlic powder, sprinkle the Italian seasonings, and then put some olive oil and toss it in here and then throw the whole thing in the oven. Cause that saves dishes if you don't use a cutting board. Like I, okay, what I'm trying to say is if you do that in the dish, or at least what happened to me was, it wasn't this particular dish, it was a larger dish. And when I had sprinkled all of the potatoes and then toss them and then flip them because they're going to be face down in the pan. There was a lot of excess seasoning sprinkled about 
that wasn't on the potato. It was all around the potato because I had sprinkled it while the potatoes were in here, right? So when I put it in a very hot oven like that, like 450 is really hot, when I put it in a hot oven like that, these started to burn. The seasonings were right on the pan, not on the potato, and you could start smelling it, and it got really smoky and burny. So I advise if you sprinkle recklessly to sprinkle elsewhere and then place the potato in your pan so that it's relatively clean around and you don't burn seasoning in your oven because it turns smoky. So we're going to do the olive oil right now and the oven is still preheating. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. Come on, tripod. Okay, so olive oil. You don't put a ton of olive oil either because it will burn and olive oil, if it gets too hot, um, causes fires. Don't let that scare you. So I do like a, if, say I got a big drizzle there, I'm not gonna drizzle this one very much because I'm just gonna wipe this onto that, right? So I'm just gonna uh, do a very light drizzle. Uh, if I go heavy someplace, I'll go light someplace else. Can you dig it? And I usually kind of toss them. I'm gonna just put them face down. Wipe them around in that goodness. Put them side by side in a preheated oven face down, and I'm gonna put the rack um, as low as I can from the bottom of the oven. And Depending on the size of your red potato, because if you get baby potatoes, they can be small, and they can be big, they can be fat, they can be thin, and depending on the size of them, the time differs. So, I've had quite large potatoes in there for 20 minutes, a little over 20 minutes, I put them back in. These are small enough that I can put them probably in for 15 minutes. If you've never done this before, if you've set your oven at four, oven, oven at 450 degrees and you're not sure how it's going to go, I'd put it at 10 minutes and check it. Put it in for five more and then check it each time after that. You know they're done. Well, you can smell them if you're used to the smell. You can also see that they're cooked because the peeling starts to crinkle. But you just take a fork and you stab, you stab it and if it goes in pretty easily, just like when you boil potatoes on the stovetop so that they're soft. Just like when you boil potatoes, you know what I mean? For potato salad, you stab it, and if it goes through easily enough, then um, then they're finished. <sighs> but if you've never done this before, and everyone's oven runs differently, and because your rack is on the lowest slot in your oven, um, they could burn. So don't when you check it the first time, when you're trying to adjust your oven, because they're all different, when you just check it the first time, Lift up a potato, you can grab some tongs, or if you're a G like me, you just reach in there and you can grab it with your fingernails. And you, you look at it, because the bottoms can burn. With that olive oil on the bottom of the potato, and it because it's face down, it takes a lot for it to burn. Like, they're really hard to burn. So, just, but just, as long as you don't neglect it and you check it, you'll be fine. You won't burn them. Okay, so. I put them in for 15 minutes. And that, my friends, is basic potato time. Okay? I'm going to close this out. I'm going to make another video, because this one's going to be very long for no reason, because six seconds will do. It's tasty. And I'm going to show you how I make the chicken that goes with the potatoes. You can buy the chicken breast. I don't like chicken breast. I think they're too fat to cook evenly. I have to pound them out all the time with a mallet. And unless I'm making chicken cordon bleu where I stuff it and fold it over, I don't want to use a chicken breast because I always end up overcooking them because I'm afraid that I can't get the, the middle hot enough. So I end up overcooking the outside just to get them. It's, I don't like it. I don't like pounding it out. So I buy chicken tenderloins. These are... Candy little chicken strips. Thin little chicken strips. Whereas a breast is like, you, you know what a chicken breast is. I like these little puppies. I, when I'm in a, when I haven't had them thawing and I'm like, oh crap, I need to cook them, all I do is put these puppies 
in a bowl. One, two, three, four. Two tonight, two tomorrow night. Two and a half tonight, two and a half tomorrow night. I pulled this, I pulled this chicken, this chicken tenderloins. I pour hot water on it. Hot ass water. The water takes a while to get hot and I just leave them in there. And then once it's filled with very hot water, I will let them sit there and then I will come back and if the water is cool, I will dump the cool water and then and then add more hot water and they'll be thawed in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 10-15 minutes they'll be thawed and that's what I do. So I'm just going to leave these in hot water and I'll be back. You just saw me putting the potatoes face down into the pan and then I turned off the camera and turn it on and realize, okay, I was watching playback just now and what you did not see was that I was tossing the potatoes. Uh, I saw that they were fully coated with extra virgin olive oil. You're supposed to kind of toss them. I rub them around a little and I make sure they're fully coated with the extra virgin olive oil. And then I put them face down in the pan. If they're not fully co coated with olive oil, they will stick to the pan. So for good measure, you may want to spray your pan. That's up to you, but I don't because I just make sure it's coated in extra virgin olive oil and I don't need to spray the pan. They're done now, and, and there they are. They're all done. They don't need to have a golden brown bottom completely. You can stab them with a fork. Let me show you. Hot! Hot! What I mean by stab. It'll just, it'll go right in there. The chicken is soft. Optimally, optimum, optimum, optimal. Preferably. <laughs> it's really good, it's really hot. Can you see the steam come off that puppy? Put it against my shirt. Look at that steam. It's too good not to eat right now though. What I do is I remove the chicken from the freezer and I'm just going to tie this into one video because I'm like mixing them together. I take the chicken out of the freezer the night before. I lay it in a long Tupperware thingy because the chicken as it thaws out from freezing obviously the juices run or whatever. So I lay the chicken in a Tupperware that's long and flat so that they don't sit on top of each other and then I season it, put it in the fridge and by the time I come home from work the next day they are thawed and they've been seasoning, marinating if you will, in the herbs and spices. Because I thawed the chicken in hot water, um, I'm just going to lay them on the same cutting board that I made the potatoes on. You can do this while the potatoes are cooking, you know, time it and everything. I'm going to lay down the chicken as they are thawed. The little tenderloins. Mm, little, little loin. That one's still a little cold. Little, little loin. You can find this in the aisle where you find all of the ethnic food, the flavorful spice of your life. This is not regular white America seasoning type aisle. And if you're curious as to what's in it, it has salt, garlic, oregano, black pepper, turmeric, and it smells delicious. So it is, it has salt, it's salty. But what I do with this is, I take this adobo, oh no, more, this way, no, this way, and I just sprinkle a good coat, not a ton, uh, as there is salt and this can get salty, 
but I make it so that the little yellow flakes cover the surface of the loin. You know, not in super big layers, but I, you know, one, you know what I mean? And then, because I am, I don't know why I do what I do, but I do it. For some reason, it's become a thing of mine to just always... I had to wash the salmonella off of me. I always put paprika on my chicken. I always put paprika on my pork chops. I always put paprika on my on the meat. Like, I don't know why. I just do it because I think it tastes good. So, I do a hefty sprinkle of some paprika. I just think paprika goes well. And husband seems to like it. This is just regular old paprika. Okay. So this may be a strange angle, but this is the only place I can put it. Get a pan that has a lid. I've got kind of a deep, my famous pot that has been with me through the barracks and whatnot. Now, I usually like to make the chicken in canola oil because canola oil has like a clean, a cleaner, I don't know, maybe I'm tripping, but all that I've got right now is vegetable oil. So I'm gonna pour a tiny bit of vegetable oil in my pan. Vegetable oil, canola oil, whoop, whatever kind of oil. And uh, it's very oily. That's how much I put. It's gonna coat and maybe have just a little bit of excess. There. A nice thick coat. There it is. Then we preheat it to. Can I turn? Can you see what I'm doing here? Boop. You preheat it. Not, you don't preheat it. You turn the burner on. Medium, medium high. Uh, depends on your stove setting. Medium is medium high. My medium, I found, is like a little bit less than medium because this can get really, really hot and you'll burn your chicken. Like, you want it really hot because uh, the key to moist chicken, obviously, is to not overcook it. And a lot of people overcook their chicken. I used to use a meat thermometer because I was so afraid of undercooked chicken and I really wanted to make sure the chicken was cooked, my friend, that I would use a meat th thermometer. But I never knew how far to put the meat thermometer in, if I should pierce it completely. I was just a mess with the meat thermometer. So I finally just cooked enough to get accustomed to what chicken looked like when it's cooked. Now, the key to keep chicken moist is to not overcook it for one, and any kind of meat, if you're cooking pork chops, if you're cooking steak, uh, not cooking, frying it, grill, stove top grilling it, pan searing it, if you will. I don't know the words, I'm not a cook, I just pretend to be. It's really hot grease, so that when you throw the meat in the pan, it'll cook the surface of it and trap the moisture in. Do you get what I'm saying? If you put it on top of the pan while the oil is not warm, if you put it, like if I were to put the chicken on right now while the oil was still room temperature, look at that nasty cooking burn, I'm putting a Maderma on it now, then it would just cook out, the the juices of the meat would cook out because uh, the skin wasn't seared. Can, can you get what I'm saying? So I have the pan on and the grease in there and my, um, I don't typically use this much grease, however, I am in a very old, cheap apartment, and the stove is not exactly the greatest, and my eye, my eyes, the, uh, the burner, the eye, tilts a little. So, usually I have a puddle of grease right here, so I have to put in kind of a good amount to just compensate for the fact that all of my grease usually drains right here, but now it'll actually stay all over the pan. You know what I mean? I'm using my hands a lot. Don't those potatoes look bomb? A trick, my trick, not my trick, this trick, the trick that I use to tell whether the grease is ready is I go over to the sink, I wet my hand, and I flick it in the grease. And if there's no sizzle, it's not ready. Did you hear a sizzle? No, not ready. Shit sizzle, it's time for the meat. I 
I can usually fit all of these five in. See how it's getting bald over there? Careful now. Okay, so once you lay the chicken down into the already hot grease, I find that a chicken tenderloin in a covered pan on medium-high heat takes about four to five minutes each side for it to become fully cooked. Of course, it's when the juices run clear. You can use a meat thermometer if you like, but it's almost a foolproof, foolproof uh, calculation I have set up here. Hot grease, chicken down, lid on, four minutes, open that bitch, flip the chicken, lid on, another four or five minutes depending on how well the first side got cooked it may or may not be four or five on the next side you know and then um, I'm pretty confident that they're cooked but I'm gonna break one open which I typically don't like to do because if you break a piece of chicken open before it rests the juices run out and it can become dry but I'm just gonna break one open so that you can see what cooked chicken looks like it doesn't look dry it doesn't look pink it doesn't look raw it looks like white stringy kind of not stringy that's the wrong word it just looks like white juicy delicious meat that's what that is I'm talking too much it should be ha should have a yellow yellow uh, kind of golden yellow you know what I mean the color of them right now When that clock says 5.20, the chicken will be done. So, I'm going to turn this off and come back in four minutes. Okay, it's been roughly about four and a half, five minutes. I'm just going to take the pan that's already dirty with my potatoes, because I don't care. I opened it the wrong way, sorry about that. And I'm going to take my chicken out. And this pan is getting hot. Oops, I just broke off a piece of chicken. I'm trying to show you what it looks like when it's cooked. It just looks like cooked ass chicken. Um. Oh my gosh, it's so juicy and delicious. There you go. And that's how I make delicious chicken. I'm a delicious. Potatoes. Mmm. Mmm. And then vegetables, but I just buy the steamers and microwave those. <laughs> and then I um I put the potatoes in there like that. Lay the chicken right next to it. And then I usually put um broccoli in between because it's colorful and beautiful and I pack it in my husband's lunch okay so thanks for spending time with me okay have a great day bye hello I want another piece of this mm. I should just chill out for this tripod makes me very sad. It's hot in here. 450 degree oven in 80 degree weather. Who does that? With the long sleeve shirt. So that's just how I roll. Anyway, that's dinner. Thanks for cooking with me. You guys made it take way longer than it was supposed to. Just kidding. Not really kidding. The... What am I? This is... Uh... What am I trying to say?
and I'm fuzzy. And I'm fuzzy. Am I fuzzy? Ha! Ha ha ha! I like that. I'm sweating. I'm perspiring. Look how shiny I am.